Hi speech students, this is Ms. Tolson and I'm going to make this short instructional video for you on content and feelings paraphrase because being able to paraphrase really, really is an essential communication skill and I've noticed that in this project a lot of you really struggle with what you're being asked to do. So have you ever kind of wondered why it is that some people just have this kind of the gift of the gab as they call it? We all know people like that. You know, they just seem to have this incredible flair for conversation, and others really are drawn to them, kind of like steel to a magnet. And not only do they often seem to be the person that people are drawn to in, in social and business settings, but they also kind of have this uncanny knack of being able to open up the communication process really in such a way that they have even the most introverted people wanting to talk to them. So really, I mean, what is it that they're doing? Well, in all probability, a big portion of what they're doing, besides being effective communicators, is they're probably paraphrasing. And learning how to paraphrase is an incredibly simple but highly effective communication skill that you really must develop. Simply put, paraphrasing is a question that's designed to clarify the listener's understanding. It's a question that helps the listener, or in other words, the receiver of the information, to be very clear on what the giver of the information is, is not only saying, but thinking or feeling. So in other words, paraphrasing is it's an opportunity in the conversation for you as the listener or the receiver of the information to check your perception on what's been said to make sure there are no misunderstandings and that you have the facts feelings and or opinions that have been communicated very clear. By paraphrasing what, you, what has been said, you're simply checking back with the person you're talking to so that you can evaluate your understanding of what they have said and therefore make sure that both of you are kind of on the same page. Paraphrasing also allows you the opportunity to encourage further dialogue with your conversation partner. By checking your perception of the facts, feelings, and or opinions that have been expressed, you, give the, the, you provide the giver of the information the opportunity to clarify and expand on what they've been telling you. So if you feel like kind of maybe your conversation has come to a dead end, try paraphrasing what's been said and, and see what happens. You just might be pleasantly surprised. Okay, so let's take a quick look at what we're going to do in this project. You're given a scenario or a statement, say from a friend. Then you're asked to write a question, write a content paraphrase, a feelings paraphrase, and a, com and a combination paraphrase. So we're going to quickly look at what you're to do in each, and then I'm going to go over and give you an example so you can kind of get the hang of it. Maybe. There we go. Okay, so first you're going to ask a question from the listener, and that's going to be you. So you, the listener, is going to ask a question that clarifies a statement or fact that you heard from the sender. And then you're going to provide a content paraphrase. And that paraphrase should focus on repeating the facts. The content of the question is stated in you, the listener's own words. And then we have a feelings paraphrase from you, the listener. The paraphrase should focus on repeating the underlying feelings or the perceived emotions of the speaker are described by you, who is the listener. And then we have the combination paraphrase from listener. And this is where a lot of you seem to really struggle. And in this paraphrase, you need to focus not only, only on repeating the facts, but on the feelings as well. It needs to include both. So here's an example of a scenario that I drew up. Um, and this is a statement from the speaker. So this would be the person that's talking to you. Hey, I'm throwing a surprise baby shower for my secretary who's going on maternity leave. All of the people from the office are going to meet at the restaurant and surprise her. She thinks she's just meeting me for a business lunch and has no clue that we're throwing her a surprise party. So for the question from the listener, a possible response might here be, what restaurant are you having a shower at? And what I've done is I've asked a question that clarifies a statement or a fact that I heard from the speaker. And then moving on, on the content paraphrase from listener, a possible response for that might be, it sounds like you have a great party planned for your secretary. As I understand it, she thinks that she's meeting you for a business lunch, but everyone from the office will be attending the party. So here my paraphrase is focusing on repeating the facts. 
And then for the feelings paraphrase from listener, a good response might be, it sounds like you're super excited about hosting this baby shower for your secretary. And what I've done here in my paraphrase response is I've focused on kind of the underlying feelings. And then last but not least, uh, the combination paraphrase from Blister, I could say something like, you sound so excited about this shower. What I heard you say is that your secretary thinks she's meeting just you for a business lunch, when in reality, everyone from the office is meeting at the restaurant to surprise her before she goes on maternity leave. My response here has focused on both the facts as well as on the feelings. So now it's your turn to try it out. I want you to please do the same thing with the scenario that you're given in this project as I've shown you just here. And remember, always use quotation marks around your responses and write them out just as if you were speaking to that person.